That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a... I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! <laughs> I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! And thing sucks! Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we are doing it live and we're doing it big once again on the Lockout Men podcast show. That is what's up. I want to welcome you guys back for another video. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. And yes, I have a very special guest for you guys tonight. Man, oh man, I, you know, I, I was chasing, now I was chasing this man down all day. I got my man, Demarky O'Brien. I had him on the, I had him on the payroll. I had a couple other people on the payroll to get this man to come on and, and, and chop it up with me this evening, man. This evening. So if you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to support me and the channel, get your boy some coffee, something to drink, something to eat. You know what I'm saying? The, the coffee app and the cash app is in the is in the description. Lockout man, do, I mean dollar sign lockout man. I do appreciate you guys for joining. We are being joined by the LOM community tonight as well. And uh we about to we we about to uh we about to jump into it, man. This this young man, I I I I'm speechless. I'm I'm really is. So let me just go ahead and bring him on in, man. Let me go ahead and welcome to the show. Or wait, wait a minute. Hold on. There we go. Let me welcome to the show Orzel Johnson. Thanks, thanks, thanks. So let me let me give you guys a pretense of what of who this gentleman is. You know what I'm saying? Now, unfortunately, uh, being that you know the LOM community can't see what I'm doing because they looking they watching from the behind the scenes. But I am about to bring up this article. Uh, I'm about to bring up this article right quick from CDL Life. Breaking news out of Jefferson County. The State Bureau of Investigations is being called in to investigate an accident on Interstate 2059 right near the Valley Road exit. CBS 42's Conan Gasquee is live at the scene. Conan, what's the latest? Well, guys, two unmarked vehicles pulled up to the scene about 15 minutes or so ago. We were told that the SBI was uh, coming to the scene and they would be handling this investigation. We've been working the phones, trying to get in contact with them to try to get the latest information on this situation. We have seen what appears to be a body in the interstate on I-2059 westbound here. There is no official confirmation about what exactly they're investigating here, but there are a number of different agencies on the scene from Jefferson County Sheriff's Office to to uh, the uh, Alabama State Troopers, Huey Town Police, and there is a medical examiner on the scene. So a number of different vehicles from different agencies here. There's also an 18-wheeler, as you can see, parked on the side of the interstate here. We have seen uh, officials walk up to the passenger side of the cab of that 18-wheeler a couple times throughout the course of the morning. There has been some impact on traffic here. Again, this is exit 18, and essentially where we are is just to the right of the on-ramp onto 5920 West, and uh, the cars to the left of that having to slow down a little bit as they come by here. The only part that is blocked off at this point is uh, basically the extension of that on ramp. So that is the impact that it's having on traffic. Again, no official confirmation at this point of exactly what they are investigating, but we're, we're told that the SBI is handling this investigation. We'll try to get information from them and have the latest details on this as soon as they become available. Live in Jefferson County, County Gasquee, CBS 42 News. Local coverage you can get. Uh, this was, uh, it says that it was a female trucker found dead on the interstate near her semi. Now, police says she was murdered. In the article, it says authorities are investigating the death of a truck driver who was found on the Alabama interstate near her truck, near her truck as a homicide. Um, Hold on right 
quick. Let me let me see something. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Got to make sure I had the right button up. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, says the body was discovered around 3.20 a.m. Wednesday, August 19th, which was a couple of days ago, uh, on a mile marker of 118 and 159 and 20 in the Birmingham area. Mr. Ozell Johnson was on his way to deliver a load to Mercedes plant when he saw another semi truck on the side of the road. And then he noticed a woman lying on the ground. Uh, Johnson stopped to find out if she was okay, but soon find out that she was lifeless and he called 911. So take us back, Orzel, uh, to where you, you know, where you noticed uh, something wasn't right. Okay, um, I was driving down 5920. I was on the phone with my co-worker because me and her stay on the phone to keep each other woke uh, during the night. And um, I was like about 20 miles ahead of her or whatever. And um, I was like, I passed um, one eight. Well, I was finna pass one eighteen. And I seen the truck on the side, and I was trying to make sure the truck wasn't get on the freeway so I could know to get over or whatever. And as I was passing, I seen somebody laying on the ground. So I was like, "Dang, somebody laying on the ground." She said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, are you lying?" Serious. So I pulled over, and um, I ran down up, and um, I asked the lady if she was okay. That she won't respond at all, so I just called nine one one. So you, when you ran up on her, where where were she? Where were she exactly in in conjunction to her truck? Uh, she was a uh, real tire uh, by the catwalk. Now in like, the, was, like her shoulder was on the tire. Now in the article, it says something to the fact that she could have that she could have fell. But po- right. police has investigated. They they investigated, and it says that uh, it could be a homicide. What? Yeah, but uh, what? Sh- what? What? It, today, what? It look like to you? Oh, um, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, when the first police officer came, uh, he was like, oh, uh, he said that she failed. And then when the ambulance came, they had shined the flashlight, and we had saw a piece of her denture on the catwalk and another piece on the ground. So I was like, oh, yeah, she probably did feel because her shoe was halfway off also. So uh, the police officer was like, well, why would she be outside her truck and have the truck locked? I feel like she was looking uh, upon her to see if her uh, kingpin was locked because she had a flashlight on her hand. So that's what I thought. But as I found out after I had woke up late on that day, I get ready for work. It was a homicide. So, like, I was just shocked from that point. So at that point, you was like, "Wow, homicide!" Did did the um, did the cops uh, did the cops do a news excerpt on it? Like, uh, like what made what what gave them the the prognosis of, 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 of that being a homicide? Uh, I wouldn't know because I had lived because I had to still deliver my load and I ain't had that much time on my clock. So I had lived. But at the time, uh, when I was there, it was only one officer there. Okay. Okay. So again, when you, when you, when you went up to her and you, you kind of hollered her name or something like that, um, no, I ain't holler her name because I ain't know her name. I mean, well, you you know, you could probably, well, not her name. I'm sorry, but you know, say, hey, are you all right? You all right? Hello, hello, hello. Where where did you notice? Yeah. It says in the article that you noticed the blood. So where did you notice the blood at? Uh, I noticed the blood as soon as I walked up. As soon right. as I walked up, she uh was bleeding from the back of her head, and she had blood on her face. 
Okay, okay. See, I want to, I, I want to shout you out, man. I, I, I really, honestly, I, I honestly appreciate what you have done, bro. I mean, a lot of, a, a lot of drivers wouldn't have done what you've done. Like we see, we, we see people break, we see truck drivers broke down on the road on a daily, like every day, and we just mind our own business right. and 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 just keep on and and just keep on. You know, just keep it on, keep it on. Ain't no telling how long she it, was th she was there, bro. Like, right, right, right. You know, and it was just by the get by the grace of God that you just so happened to see. You know, just happened to see her. You know, just being on the ground. You know, and you you talk. But it just ain't just a truck driver that you know said that that passed by that don't. Say nothing. It was it was like people in the car also because like it was several cars that was in front of me had passed right by her. You know what I'm saying? And then I almost got hit when I was out there uh, checking to see if she was okay. I had to grab her flashlight to let people know to get over. All right. I almost got hit. So this was around. So this was around three three a.m. So what time was your what time your, was your uh, appointment to Mercedes? Oh, uh, about like four thirty. About four thirty. Um, did you call your did Did you call your company to let them know that you you know you could have possibly been you know be a little late? You know what What did your company say about uh, about the situation when you when you told them? Oh, uh, I really did tell them because uh, I was like I was just thinking about. Just taking the load to Mercedes, so I didn't really call them because they really don't be uh, in the office at night or something like that. So I just I really didn't tell them anything. Um, was this uh because like I had a similar I had a similar uh thing that happened like last year when a female ran to uh, a truck driver on that same freeway just another incident over and uh she flipped over the truck and she died from that accident so like i already know they weren't gonna be in the office because i had this same uh thing that happened like a year a uh, year ago the young lady that was uh that was found on the that that was found they finally got a name for her she is Christine Summers from Hazel Green. Uh, she was 53 years old. Um, and as I said before, in the beginning, they said that uh, that the police had had surmised that this was a homicide. But as as you said, Orzel, you you, you think it's more of an accident than than of a homicide. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or or Zell, man. Um, right. A lot of these, a lot of these women, gets into this into this field. Uh, ain't no telling how long she been driving. I mean, she was. Uh, they said she was fifty three years old, so she could have been a veteran, or she could have, you know, or she could have just got into the field. But a lot of these females that gets into this this male dominated field of truck driving, nobody tells them about safety you know what i'm saying right nobody really tells them about safety now as a man we you know pretty much know what to look out for and and so forth and so on but as far as a woman that's coming into this game nobody actually tells them about what to look out for what to have what do you think these companies need to do to better protect their female drivers? Uh, basically, just uh, tell them the truth, you know what I'm saying, about uh, this this uh, industry is, like, very dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Truck driving is very dangerous. Uh, and always be safe and just Stay focused and, and look your, around your surroundings. That's just like being in the car. You know what I'm saying? 
just check your surroundings and make sure you be safe. You know, a lot of us, a, a lot of us drivers, a lot of us drivers out here, you know, we, we're, we're in a thankless position. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, we, you know, during the coronavirus, it was like, oh, thank you, truckers. We appreciate you, truckers. Yada, 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 truckers, trucker this and trucker that. But now that, you know, the com coronavirus kind of like, you know, is, is, is lowering, we're not getting that type of, we're not getting that type of love no more. You know what I'm saying? We're not right. getting, we're not getting that type of love no more. And yeah, you ain't laughing about that because I got a couple birds. <laughs> <laughs> Man, for no reason. But I, I'm here to tell you, bro. I I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate right. what you've done because, again, like I said, you know, ain't no telling how long she would have been. She was out there. You know what I'm saying? Until right. you know, until you just happened to look over and like. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Now, was you, now, now, let me ask you, what, was you kind of hesitant in, in, in actually pulling over to, to check on this young lady or you was, or you was headstrong, like, yo, I, I got to go out here and, and, and see if she was all right. Oh, uh, I really didn't know it was a female or not. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was just headstrong to make sure that the person that was laying on the ground was all right, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't no tell it like they probably would have found anybody like when the sun would have came up. So I was just headstrong trying to make sure that person was okay that was laying on the ground. Man, like I said, uh, Mar uh, Marty, wait, Marty, Marty, hold on right quick, hold on. Marty say no more. What's going on with you? Did you say thinkless? No, thankless. I, I know I get, bleh, you know, probably might need to get something to drink to, to smooth out the way I'm talking. But, um, but thankless, this, this is a thankless job. You know, we, we don't, we, we're not appreciated, you know, to be honest, right. to be honest, we're, we're not appreciated. And for this driver to, uh, roll roll over pull to the side and actually get out and check on this check on the well-being of another driver that's fucking awesome man you know because like i said we we passed we passed broke down trucks on the side of the on the side of the highway air day air day you know what i'm saying right. and and we don't we don't think nothing of it. Now, if this was like back in the day, because, you know, this is 2020, but back in the day when truckers was was a brotherhood, yeah, you you would see about maybe two, three drivers on the side just to see, just to see and make sure that that one driver is all right. You know, bring them some food, bring them some water, you know, bring them a, you know, a cover or whatever, you know, but 2020, us drivers now, we don't do that. We don't do that. You know, the, it's, right. it's, it's not a brotherhood. Uh, brother man, right now, I want to I wanna bring in DeMarchio. Let me, let me see if I can. DeMarchio? What's up? All right. DeMarchio Bryan, everybody. <laughs> DeMarchio, I got, uh, I got Orzel Johnson on the line with us tonight man this is the uh this is the young man this is the young man that uh that that found the young lady uh christine let me make sure i get her name right christine summers uh again she was 53 uh years old uh and she she was found by uh orzel uh johnson um Demarcio, oh, man, uh, say what's up to uh, say what's up to my man, and and uh, you wanted me to bring you in, so go ahead and say what you want to say. Hey, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Not much. My name is Demarcio Bryan. They also call me Young Grind, a Young Global. Uh, I wanted to uh, thank you for your observation and also with your first or second mindset of uh, that feeling that you had to, well, let me go and check on this driver. 
my question was because you know we out here on this road and drivers that in the old days you know you see one truck pulled over two or three trucks are pulled over and to you know make sure it's not wrong with that driver you know looking out for one another that back in the old days they knew that they we're not doing now unless you're with a certain right. company uh so my question was while you was headed to your delivery they stated in a news article was her flashlight on when you approached her that made you go that made you go uh check on that truck or did you actually just see the body because it's three o'clock in the morning and it's still dark outside it's hard to see a body on the ground well the way i the way i was coming in my light flashed that way and so that's why i saw the body i ain't seen no no flashlight or anything the flashlight was on when i walked up Oh, okay. Was you said you said her flashlight was was on or off? It was off. Oh, uh, it was off. You, you could you surmise that the batteries probably ran out, or it was, or it was off because no, because no, because I said I picked it up and used it to flash the other drivers to get over, right. so okay. I wouldn't get hit. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. So it worked. Okay, okay. So was she on it? So. Was she on the driver's side or she was on the passenger side? She was on the driver's side. So you actually going down the way, her she was visible on the ground while others was just passing her up, though, right? Well, she wasn't really visible because she had all gray on. Okay. But um, I just basically seen her, her arm and of uh, the style of her dick when I was paying the truth. Now, again, because the, the, she, she was Caucasian. Okay. So, again, the cops said that she was, she, they said it was a homicide. So. Yeah, the, yeah, the cops said it was a homicide, but they said that the driver stated that that it looked like she fell off the cap. Right. That's that's but what I that's what cop, I said. You know. That's what I said. What uh, Orzel saying. But I'm I'm still trying to figure out. I mean, is this an isolated uh, or is this like is this like uh, I mean, I'm looking at the picture. So is this like an 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 isolated area? of of the place like i mean like was it busy or something like that i should say oh it wasn't busy so she on the highway i don't know man it don't, it don't get busy um uh, on that part of I mean, on the freeway, it's about like four thirty, five o'clock in the morning because there'd be a lot of folks going towards Tuscaloosa Way. A homicide, though. I mean, yeah, that's what I said. I, I mean, you you on a busy part of the you on a busy highway is is no it's it, it's not in the area of of. Metro, I I should say, it's not in the metro area, right? I mean, it could no. it could be, but in that particular area, yeah, no. Well. Yeah. So a homicide? How? See, that's what I need to know. I I I need to know. See, I I I need to find out. I need to know how did they deduce that that was a homicide? Was was there anybody else in the truck? Was there a co-driver in the truck? Did it look like there was another co-driver in the truck or anything like that? Uh, I actually knocked on the door, and then nobody comes to the door, so I guess not. Well, you know what it... And then, well, and then the police officer picked up the key and actually opened the door and got in the truck, so... And then nobody come out then when he was searching for her ID. Okay, okay. Now you know what? I maybe I could be wrong. Uh maybe somebody could've 
pulled over, you know, and probably did something to her. I mean, it's it's three something in the morning. It's dark. It's super dark. You know, she's a female. Right. You know, somebody probably could have, you know, could have, uh, you know, could have assaulted her and all like that and have her to end up. Or somebody could have hit her. I mean, could it just, could it, could it, when you came up on it, do it look like she was like, like hit, like, or she was just spurred out, like, like she just, like uh, you said, she no, just. No, when fell. I came, yo, when I came up, it looked like she fell because uh, her arms was tucked in on her chest and her legs just spread a little bit. And like I said, her, her uh, shoulder and her, uh, bicep was on the tie. So that's why I said she probably feels she probably tried to kick herself before she fell all the way back and hit her head because the, uh, the blood behind her head was just behind her head. It was nowhere else. And then they found like a spider blood on the catwalk by her dentist. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to have to, uh, as of right, as of right now, while, while it's still developing, I, I I think I'm gonna have to agree with you, uh, Orzel. I, I I'm 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 thinking I'm, I'm gonna see this as an accident until uh, the cops, you know, the autopsy, the autopsy report come out. Uh, hopefully, I can get a hold of her son, um, and we can we could probably get a a little bit more um, information uh, from him, but. A homicide, that's that's pushing it a little, considering, you know, the right. situation. Uh, Mary, let me make sure I'm pronouncing her name right, because, you know, I beat people's names up. Uh, Marty St. Amores is, is asking, local or sleeper? Uh, I'm thinking it's a sleeper because Orzel just said that he, yeah, he, yeah, he got into a, he got into a, a sleeper. Uh, Jeremy Griggs says, "Was she pulling a reefer? Maybe she fell off checking the temp. Was it was it a reefer trailer that you could tell, Orzel? Uh, no, it wasn't a reefer trailer. Okay, so basically, she was probably just, you know, she probably might have been driving, probably heard something, you know, got out like us truckers do, you know, with the flashlight in our hands." you know, wave it, you know, so that, you know, cars could get over or whatever, you know, and was probably just, you know, just checking around her truck. And, um, and, um, and yeah, something, you know, something happened. But again, as, as I said, you know, as far as, as far as females in this industry, though, you know, if it was a, if it was, um, a homicide, you know what I'm saying? I think companies need to just, I think companies need to better uh, find ways to better protect their drivers. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of companies, you know, they like, you know, they don't want you to have no weapons on their trucks, uh, no, no, yep. no guns, no knives, uh, you know, it's against company policy, but, we're pulling high value freight every day. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're we're pulling high value freight every day. And you know, somebody could cut us off just to, you know, stop us, get out of the car and you know, uh you know, just like all the other truckers doing the corona, you know, doing all that pan the pandemic and all that uh looting and all that rioting and all that protesting. You know, there's, there's, right, you know, there's no, there's, there's no way that they could, you know, protect themselves. Now, the one, <laughs> the one driver, the FedEx driver, I don't blame what he did. You know what I'm saying? I, it was, a, it was a hurtful situation what he did, and he pulled off and dragged the one, you know, protester up under the, up under his uh, tire. But look what happened to the dude that was that was going through the protester on that bridge. You know what I'm saying? He got pulled, you know, he got pulled out and damn near got sw uh, swamped, you know? So as far as females getting in precarious situations, 
you know, like I said, is us guys, we pretty much know what we're going to do. You know what I'm saying? But as far right. as a female in the in the game, you know, it's is is is, is kind of hard. Demarcio, man, what what do you what do what do you say? Uh, what do you think uh, companies need to do to better protect their female drivers, man? Uh, not just not just female drivers. We're talking about drivers, period. That's living on the road, and we work and sleep in that truck. You know, uh, drivers had you know gave up their homes and stuff like that to stack their money to live in their truck. So, and it's like people that live in some of these communities know what we pick up at and plotting to attack truckers, you know. Uh, so it's like that's our home away from home. So we need to be able to protect ourselves as if we were at home. So why should we be unsafe and we can't carry when we're legalized to carry or have a weapon on the truck, but we have to protect ourselves. So it's not going, it shouldn't be up to, that shouldn't be, you know, you could be, I, I would feel like you could be concealed, as long as you concealed and carry, you can carry. But as the company policy saying that you can't have weapons on the truck, why not? Exactly. That's how we protect ourselves. And especially now, and especially it, we with, we with drive in high value loads. Lady, right. Now with this lady here and like brother was saying that it looks like she may have had a, some type of injury uh slipping and falling off the catwalk and this may have just been just a uh a, uh a, a, a head concussion, uh fatality. Uh but Birmingham where she was just out of Birmingham is known for attacking truck drivers. Mm -hmm. Sitting on the side of the road, sitting on the uh, sitting at the truck stop. Birmingham is not the place to to have fun at. Mm. So, uh, you know, that's where robberies happen at. Drivers come up missing, found killed. You know. Uh, But uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's like where I work at. Uh, we can carry. Um. So, but I feel like uh, drivers should be able to protect themselves by any means. All right, the uh, because we are the target. The uh, LOM community is uh chiming in right now. Uh, Texas Prince, he says, uh, lockout man. What's the topic? Well, the topic, uh, tonight is I'm talking. I'm I'm talking with the young man Orzel Johnson. He's the young man that found the uh the lady trucker that was found uh that was found parish on the side of the road in um in Birmingham. Uh let me uh let me bring let me bring that back up for you guys so that uh so that you guys could see. Um her name was uh Christine Summers from Hayes from Hazel Green. Uh, she was found dead near her truck on I-59 and 20 on um, on uh, in Al on an Alabama interstate uh, this past Wednesday, uh, the 19th. Uh, truck driver Orzel Johnson is who we have on the line right now. I also have um, I also have uh, Demarcio Bryant. He's on the line as well. Uh, you guys may remember Demarcio O'Brien. He was the one that brought me the information about the uh, missing trucker. Uh, luckily for you know, luckily for that family, he was found and uh, returned home safe. And I will be, I will be doing a follow up on that. Uh, he's also the one that gave me the information about this uh, tragic uh, story too. But what uh, what this young man did, Orzel Johnson, what he did, what nobody else you know, what nobody else do in this time frame is he actually got concerned about, you know, the driver that was on the side of the road and he went over the air, pulled over and actually got out of the truck to go and check on the, uh, 
check on the driver and unfortunately uh unfortunately she was uh she was she was passed um the police are saying homicide but orzel myself and demarcio we we kind of leaning towards an accident so um so again you know we you know we just trying to figure out ways now if it was a homicide, if she was assaulted, you know, we just trying to figure out ways how company can come together and protect us drivers. You know, I mean, instead of being so worried about getting the load to, you know, getting the load to and from uh, shippers and receivers, what about the drivers that's doing the driving in the meantime? You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate all you guys coming in. Jeremy Grids, you said something about Prime having a uh, panic button. What do you think about what what do you think about that, uh, Orzel? What do you think about that? Do you do you think a panic button would um would suffice if if any drivers get uh get uh get in, in a in a situation? Because I mean, companies can find their trucks, like, you know, their trucks is outfitted with GPS. But do you think, do you think, you know, that if something happened to us, we, you know, we should be able to hit a panic button to, you know, to forewarn the uh, company to let us, let them know that something's going on? Well, it, it, it all depends on how fast the authorities going to call when you hit that panic button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. But I think you, you should have something. You know what I'm saying? To uh, let the authorities know that, you know what I'm saying, something going on with you. But it all depends on how fast they're going to come to you. Because, like, when I call, uh, call the emergency line, it took them at least about 20, 25 minutes to come out. Okay. What, what, how, how you feel about, how, how you feel about panic buttons in the, uh, in the truck, um, DeMarchio? Uh, that would all come down to, it would all based on the situation and the circumstances that you would come up under. Uh, and I think if that was to come about, they would probably make that with, like, let's say, a new, L, a new ELD, you know what I'm saying, or uh, something like that. It would probably end up being with the ELD, but it's all going to depend on the situation that you're up under. Uh, but the thing is, is it seems like all this stuff that's going on with, with truck drivers is happening outside of the truck instead of inside of the truck. Okay, okay. Somebody tell me. <laughs> I'm over here. I'm over here at the uh, at, at at the uh, best turnpike uh, rest station. I don't care what nobody say. Ohio got the best. Uh, got the best turnpike uh rest station i'm just saying but i'm i'm watching this amazon truck that looks like a fucking uh not a fedex truck but what's the uh look like a ups them green ups trucks when did when did amazon start getting them kind of trucks man god damn it man um highway journey says uh City buses has uh, has panic buttons, uh, panic buttons too. But you know what? Uh, highway journey, uh, city buses though they they have their own police force. Uh, you know I you know I stay in Cleveland and the art and the and the RTA, the Regional Transit Authority, have their own police department. So yeah, they can hit that panic button, and they right there lickety split. You know, it's like it's like what Orzel just said. Yeah, you can hit the panic button, but how long is going to take uh, for the authorities to get there? Now, being that um, being that you know that troopers goes up and down the uh, the uh, interstate, maybe they you know it, it could be hot you know hot wired into the you know into the uh, system or something like that. Maybe I I mean I I don't know. Uh, David Henry says, uh, he said, carry your pistol. He said, carry your pistol, point blank, period. 
He said he he <laughs> said, I know that word. he said he'd rather be judged by twelve than carried by ten. <laughs> uh, <laughs> carried carry by ten. God damn it, man! You need ten people no. now. Now, now with the uh, with the panic button, you know it's like you hit the panic button. They'll come in and say, like, let's say it has a microphone, and they'd be like, "Well, what's your emergency?" Well, we don't need you to ask me what's my emergency. We just need to hit that panic button, and it shows you my location that you had somebody en route. Or, there you go. It sounds like you. It, it you sounds like asking, it's, you. You sit up here asking fifteen, twenty-one questions mm-hmm. before you even send somebody out to me. So if they go into this update of uh, putting panic buttons on semis, we should be able to just hit the panic button. And it just sends out an, uh, an, an alert, an alert to across, the nearest, yeah, uh, across the uh, authorities, yeah. Uh, local police, state yeah. police, troopers. Yeah, it should it should alert all of us uh, or all of them to like, look, there's there's a trucker in trouble or or some situation like that. Um, let me see. What's up, Michael Watts? What's going on? Um, so yeah, man, it's I mean, I think, you know, with with the government is trying to figure out uh ways to regulate, you know, the trucking industry like they do, like they keep doing. But they 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 talking the other stuff, but they're not talking about our safety. They talking about safety in the streets, you know, keeping the streets safe, but what about keeping us safe? I have yet to hear I have yet to hear anybody in Congress, anybody in 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 the White House or anything like that talk about how can we keep our drivers safe out here on the road. But they talk about how to keep the road safe, but not about the drivers. Because again, if this was uh if if this was a homicide, you know. How how can we keep how can we keep our drivers safe? And again, back back you know to back up a little bit. How long she was out there? How how long you was drive How long you was driving up until you came up uh, came up on her, Orzel? Can you repeat that again? I was loose, sir. Uh, how how long you was driving? Like you know how you know how far you know how much time you 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 ran before you came up on her? Was it like you know like an hour you was driving? Uh, forty five minutes you was driving? You no, just, I actually drove from Kentucky. And how much time? How much time you had left? You said you didn't have that much time, but how much time you had left? Yeah, I had like I had like fifty two uh minutes left. Okay, okay. Now let me ask you this. Do you drive for a company that, that allows uh uh PC, personal convenience? Because if you would have been there for an extreme amount of time, you you could have PC to you know, you're not supposed to PC to the to the receiver, but you could PC Yeah, but I ain't I didn't even I didn't even do anything with my time thing. I just jumped out the truck. Oh, okay. I didn't touch that. I just jumped out the truck. So my time was just still rolling. Man, like I said, again, I, I, I appreciate you, bro. I, 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 I appreciate you, you know, doing your due diligence and, and having some, having some type of concern about, uh, you know about this uh about this unfortunate driver uh again let me get everybody that's uh that's coming in let me get you guys uh let me get you guys caught up we're we're talking to I'm talking to uh uh Orzel Johnson he's the uh driver that uh that he, that found the young lady uh 53 year old Christine Summers from Hazel Green um he discovered her lifeless body uh Wednesday morning uh around 3:20 in the morning. What time you actually started? It was like 3:20. You didn't have that much time. So you you must have started like real early on on your clock. Yeah. I started like at uh 3 I 
I think it was like four four o'clock they uh Tuesday evening. Okay, okay. So do you normally drive nights or this or Yeah, I drive So is so Yeah, I drive oh, nights. Okay. Is this a is this a regular route for you or if or you are over the road yeah. driver? No, it's a regular route. Oh, okay. I do a route every day. Oh, okay. So you're from Alabama then? Yeah, I'm from Birmingham. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh so this is what? Local? Local for you? Local company? Yes. Oh, okay. How how long you been driving, bruh? Uh, I've been driving for uh, five years, but I just started this company last year. Oh, okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right. Um. So yeah, man, we're we're you know we're talking about uh, safety for us drivers um, on the road. Uh, again, uh, my man Demarcio Bryant. You guys know Demarcio. He's the one that keeps uh, that keeps me in the loop. And all like that, and uh, we're talking to uh, Orzel Johnson. Um, let me see if the community have any questions. Uh, Trucker J seven o two. Uh, what's going on, Trucking Faith? Hey, Trucking Faith, what's going on with you? Um, seven o two says uh, Glock forty, and keep your head on a swivel. <laughs> <laughs> he said keep your head on a swivel yeah you gotta you gotta keep your head on a swivel out here you know what i'm saying like i said we're we're, we're we're driving these high value loads on a daily and ain't no telling who's you know who's gonna come out of the cut and and see you know trying to catch us slipping you know what i'm saying there's somebody there's somebody always trying to catch us slipping and hopefully as as I said before, hopefully, I, I'm hoping that this is not a homicide. I'm 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 hoping that this was just a terrible accident. Uh, but if it is a homicide, um, yeah, I, I you know isolated area, dark. You know what I'm saying? You know, three four o'clock in the morning. So yeah, and another thing, and another thing we're talking about is uh, how how we as a community could should come you know should come together better to you know watch over one of one another. If we do see a truck uh, a truck on the side of the road that's broke down, you know, pull over for a minute and just to see if they are right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but we don't, you know, back in the day, it was no problem. But now, you know, we 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 don't have that. We we don't have that no more. Uh, Orzel, do you think we need to go back to um, we need to go back to being a brotherhood? Do you think do you think that's what this industry is lacking? The brotherhood? Yeah, I actually do think that um, they lack it in that. And uh, we, it's, a, it's a lot of truckers that, that's, that's like, their mind is different from other things like the racism and everything else. Like, they just cut all that out and just, you know what I'm saying, help one another. Exactly. What do you, what do you, what do you think, uh, DeMarcio? Yeah, uh, Truck drivers need to look out for each other uh, because it could be something simple, uh, getting helping somebody get back up on the road or saving somebody's life. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, people may have a medical condition going on where they was able to get the truck pulled over, and that was it. Uh, but at the, you know, at the same time, the people that's not in the trucking industry need to be grateful that we have what we have in this in this world of truck drivers that's delivering y'all wants and needs. So it's like why are we y'all targets of wanting to harm or kill us when y'all take us out, then what? Exactly. This is how y'all world is this is how y'all world is surviving. There's nothing that you have in your house. There's nothing that you how are you eating? You know, why are you going to these stores uh, when they open up and doing all this shopping and everything like that, we are spending 
our times away sacrificing our own life behind the wheel. As dangerous it is behind right. this eighty thousand pound equipment that y'all don't understand. But right. the only way y'all surviving is by a truck. Right. I mean, because one thing is that truck drivers truck drivers have the number one overhand rule of America and that is a truck driver can come together and say, Well we're not delivering to Birmingham. It's too dangerous. You know, uh this coronavirus got the shelves empty. What if trucking became what if truck drivers came up went on a strike and nobody in America moved? If these major companies and these if these, if the mega carriers stop moving down to the owner operators stop moving with just a day, the gas stations will run out of gas. The shelves will, will be uh will be empty. Truck drivers run everything in this world for y'all to eat, survive, want and eat. So all this attacking truck drivers what? Now you. What are we doing? Uh, why the well on that slow ass train? You know, right? <laughs> now you know, you know, Demarcio, you you make a good point. You you make an excellent point uh, about uh, about truck drivers going on strike and everything. But I want to play devil's advocate for 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 a hot second. You know, if if the truck drivers do go on strike. You know there's you you know there's other quote unquote drivers are there to come in and swoop up and 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 still keep the truck moving. You know what I'm saying? What what do you got what yeah, but ain't that what, what do you what do you what do you got to say what do you got to say about that? How how do we how do we discourage scab workers in the trucking industry if we decide to go that that route of 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 striking right demarcio yeah uh, did, you heard the question no oh. <laughs> I I said uh I said uh you make a good point as far as as far as striking goes but you know there's going to be other drivers out here that's that's ready to get into the seat. How do you how, how do you discourage drivers uh from getting in the seat to make the to make the strike happen? Uh well if everybody agreed to go on strike, we won't have to worry about anybody delivering nothing because everything out here in this field from dry vans to tanker to flatbed to oversized, whatever the case is, we will all just stop moving because, yeah, there's the money's up and down and there's too many, uh, too much drama regulations that we're dealing with out here on this road that's affecting, uh, you know, our livelihood. You know what I'm saying? So if truck drivers went on strike all across America, and we're talking from mega carriers, uh, Snyder, Swift, Creed, J.B. Hunt, if they stopped to the owner-operators of small company businesses, everybody went on strike at the same day for a week, or 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, it don't matter how long we go on strike for just to give one time of how much effect we have, we can have on the world if we shut down. Because we move, we move the world. Hmm. What, do, what, do, what do you got to say, uh, Orzel? What, what do you got to say on that? Yeah, I, I agree with him. Uh, like I said before, uh, they would have to wait on a slow train. <laughs> so say so like we we just you know say need to like find a way to uh, make sure that our truckers is like really uh, safe out here and you know say just you know be able to take care of themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like because it, it's really dangerous out here, and it seems like. The companies don't care. They just worry about getting that money from that load that you had taken drop. You know what I'm saying? 
That's what's up, man. D Nitty, what's going on, my brother? What's going on? He says, um, he says strike is illegal, but he said we can we can all take a day off. Uh, we could take off for a day, but it's legit. It, but if it's a legit strike, we could be in tr. Uh, we could be in big trouble. Uh, D Nitty, why why would you say that? Why why would you think that we would be in big trouble if if we decide to strike? I mean, we we driving. We're we're in an industry that's not governed by uh by union. So, I mean, you know, we if a person decides to stop driving today, the company could say fuck you and get somebody else in your seat the next day. For every one driver. There's 10 motherfuckers that's ready to take your seat. But, you know, now, but as far as a union goes, a union can say, yo, we're we're not moving, period. Then they can't get somebody to get in that seat. Um, Marty St. Amour says, uh, says face mask strike, <laughs> you know. But, um, but yeah, man, I, I mean, we... As far as as far as as far as safety goes, you know, we we need to we we definitely need to come together uh, to to figure out something, something, you know what I'm saying, to make sure that that we're uh, that we're good out here, you know what I'm saying, and uh, rest in peace to um, hold on right quick, I'm about to rest in peace to uh, to uh, Christine Summers. Uh, hopefully her her son. I I have found her son on Facebook, so hopefully uh, he will reach out to me and I can uh you know I can talk to him and we can get a uh we can get a you know backstory about his mom's uh, whether she's a veteran driver she been driving for a long time or or she's you know or she just you know came up into the game. Again, the uh, police said that, you know, she was, uh, she, they said it was a homicide. Uh, again, me, my, myself, and uh, DeMarchio and Orzel, we feel that it probably might just been a tragic accident the way that she was, you know, the way she was on the ground. And shout out to, uh, shout out to you, Orzel, man, for, you know, for having that concern for that for that fellow driver to actually get, you know, pulled over, you know, how however far down that you pulled over, uh, because you know, trucks can't stop on a dime. <laughs> so, you know, you pulled over and you ran back down to, you know, to where she was at. And um and yeah, after you called the cops, uh a after you called the cops, uh about how long did it take the how long did it take for the cops to to roll up on you and did anybody else did anybody else pull over to the side to you know to help as well well the cops didn't come the um the fire department came first oh the fire okay uh, it was like yeah it was like uh, about 20 25 minutes and then nobody else stopped. Everybody else just kept on riding back. And then, like, when I posted on um, the group that we in, that everybody in Birmingham be in, uh, they were like, oh, I just passed them. Oh, I ain't no right. on the ground, but I just... Right. I mean, that's, that is so crazy. Hey, can I get a pill receipt? Um, that, that is so crazy, bro, that, that, that everybody that... uh. You know that when you post in these in in these groups, because you know I you know Demarcio sent me the article, but I did go, I did go to the group that you posted in, and everybody that that commented in the group was like, "Oh man, I just passed that. I ain't know that happened." And yada yada yada, and this that and the third. And what 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 do but, you say? What do you say to those yeah. drivers, man? What what do you say to those drivers that said that yeah. said that? To my under uh, excuse me, to my understanding, the only way that uh Ozell was able to see it was the reflection of his headlights. So uh depending on the angle of what he was doing, because from the article 
it looked like she was sitting off of an exit ramp or on ramp. Yeah, yeah, it's around. But yeah, but I mean, on ramp. But like I said, you know, Orzel was in a truck and he was he was able to see that it was something wrong. You would think that a person in a car could get a better view, though, right? Yeah, the headlights did lower to the ground in the car than the truck. Right. Yeah. So. And she was and she like, off on the arm ramp. And then, like, when I was out there, had the best light, moving people over, like, they still didn't saw It's crazy. Uh, it's like I said, man. I, I like I said, I, I, I could see it from a number of ways. You know, maybe she got hit. But as you, but as you said, you know, as you came up on her, you know, you said the blood and everything was off the back of her head, so it looked like she slipped and fall, slipped and fell. Right, and it looked like, and the blood that was on her face it looked like she was coughing up that blood, trying to breathe. And nobody, it's, it's, man, it's, it's like I said, man. I mean, you know, from, from you know, from you know, people that people that that be on a that be on the road, they, you know, that that's supposed to be, you know, focused and paying attention. Again, like I said, you a, a car has a better vantage of seeing her situation than. Than than him in the truck, it was just by it was just by faith that you just happened to look over and was like, "Oh shit, there's somebody laying on the ground." Like you had to like, I mean, did I mean you you literally did a double take, right? Did you before you stopped? Right. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I mean, you know, you had to be like, "What? Wait, whoa, wait, what? Oh, wait a minute, hold on." Let me let me go and uh check out check check that out right quick. Um yeah, you said exactly what I see. Right. <laughs> That's exactly what I see. Right. So but you know, again, uh, as I said before, you don't know how long she been there. She could have been she could have she could have been there for for hours before before Orzel even got there. And Hello, did I lose her? And, Hello? and it's crazy. It's crazy, man. Well, you know what, Orzel, man, thank you very much, man. I, I appreciate you coming in. Um I I appreciate you, period, man. You know, we you know, we need we need to be thanked more. You know what I'm saying? Not not being thanked because of a pandemic or anything like that. We need to be thanked more like, yo, thank you. You know, just walk past a driver and just say thank you. It doesn't it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be you know whatever. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, there we go. All right, we all here. Orzel, Demarchio. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. okay. Long yeah, term. yeah. Um, uh, question: mm -hmm. Was there any was there any update uh, on the article at all uh, for for the police to say it was a homicide, or did you see? Oh, uh, I read that. See, to yeah. say it was a homicide. Well, I didn't see anything. Well, like I said, man, rest rest in peace, uh, Christina Summers. Uh, again, I hope uh, I hope uh, we can we can uh, talk to her son, and uh, I could get a little bit I could get a little bit more. Um, I can get a little bit more on that. Uh, thank you guys for coming on. Uh, I appreciate it, uh, Demarcio, uh Bryant, and. Uh, or Zell Johnson, thank you. Thank you for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh thank you to the LO oh, thank you to the LOM community for stopping by. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, uh 
I think Demarcio, you you on your break, right? And I and and Orzel, you still rolling, right? Yeah, I yeah, I'm at home with uh. I'm at home having family dinner. I roll back out. Oh, okay, that. that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, guys, uh, I will let you guys go. You guys have a beautiful, blessed night, man. I'm about to go ahead and uh, end this special edition podcast uh, for the night, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Orzel, uh, I will I will test you back for the information that I that I need to uh, you know to to flip this over on uh, you know flip this over on my podcast. I need a couple of photos and shit like that. But I'll I'll test you if I don't right. if I don't get back with you tonight, man. I'll I'll just test you tomorrow for everything that I need. All right. Okay, and you fine. already got you already got my friends' requests on uh, Facebook, so definitely uh, if you ever want to come back on and chop it up with me, man, you're so welcome to uh, come on the on the uh, Lockout Me and Podcast Show. Okay, I appreciate All right. it, Demarco. You take it easy, man. We out. All right, lockout. Peace out. Demarco Bryant and Orzel Johnson, everybody. Man, 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 shout out, shout out to that brother. I mean, shout out to that brother. Uh, again, I'm about to bring, I'm about to bring the picture, you know, the picture back up right here. As you guys can see how dark, like how dark it is right there. And, and Orzel was, was able to, you know, notice the young lady, you know, laying on the, laying on the ground. And uh, and again, the police said that it was it was a homicide, and I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was a homicide. I I don't know. I don't know. But uh, that's it, everybody. I appreciate all you guys being here, and um, I appreciate all you guys being here tonight for this special edition of uh, Lockout Men Podcast. I do have uh, an interview that I am about to get to. Uh, I'll probably restart the live feed so you guys can uh, watch that and see who I'm about to talk to. That's if she's available. It's a little bit late in the evening. Uh, I'm going to call I'm gonna call to see if she's uh, ready to knock it out. But um, but yeah, man, yeah. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more, man. Uh, if you like to support the channel and support me, hook a brother up with some coffee, man. You know the cash app and the and the coffee app is in the description. Dollar sign lockout, man. You know what I'm saying? Hook me up with some coffee, man. Uh. Thanks to uh, Orzel Johnson for being that driver, man, because we, we need more drivers like him. You know what I'm saying? We need more drivers like him, you know? I mean, if that was me in that situation, I definitely would have did the same, the exact same thing, the exact same way. Um, I'm going to get somebody to play me out, and while they playing me out, I just want to say thank you for the support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And just just thank you, period. You know what I'm saying? Without you guys, there would not be no me. You know what I'm saying? I I, I go hard for you guys. You know what I'm saying? DeMarcio hooked me up with a story. And from that time I got the story, I got the work. You know what I'm saying? I got the work. And I was I was happy that I was able to, you know, chase this man down, get him on a podcast, and um, and then to have it for you guys right there so thank you very much uh again without you guys there would not be no me so uh with that said i'm gone you guys take it easy y'all have a beautiful and blessed night and i'll come back at y'all with another video peace